All right, hi. Um, our teams, as you well know, is connected to emerging media arts. And today um, I'd like to share a few of the apps I use to try and get into the emerging media arts. Uh, for me, emerging media arts is a way to mix up and really creatively think about your product. The product can actually start as a two-dimensional or a classic art product, especially visual. It can be a 3D object or a 2D object. And what the emerging media part does is it really helps mix it up and create something different uh, that you can share. What I love about the apps that I'm going to show is the fact that they are really a great entry point to this world. So they're easy to use, they produce something fairly quickly, and as a result, we can help kids and ourselves start experimenting. The reason I'm sharing these three is these are the ones I start with, and I love the kind of things they can do. It's just complicated enough while being incredibly accessible at an entry point. So let's, let's go first with a flip a clip. So this is Flip a Clip, which is kind of a funny name, and this is the education version. And what this allows to do is the classic flipbook, just digital, and it has some fantastic features to it. And one of them is the way it's created. So I will show you something, for example, like this. So you can bring in a background. In this case, we're bringing in a background that allows you to have something to work with. And then you create a shape. In this case, I created a little red shape. You can see that there. And the advantage is, as you can see the frames, I'm creating something very small because I'm experimenting. And I will show you what happens. So you can see where the last two images were. So you're very clear about where you were and you can just recreate them very quickly. All you have to do is press on that plus. You can see where the last one was. So if you want to create the next one, you just create it here. You can edit it, so I can erase it a little bit and say, no, I want it a little bit smaller. I can use a different color and I can even add a text. So now I've got an eighth one. You can add music, although I think that when you're playing with something like this, you just want to go. And on the right hand side, you just make it go and the animation happens. And if I want to add more frames, you can. So this can start just by playing and see how a flipbook works. And then you can add complexity. And again, what I love is I can go back here and add an element. For example, um, I can add uh, something that happens down here, for example, a drop right that will keep dropping so i will add it here you can see that there's the shadow and i can make the next one and i can go to the next one and make the next one and the next one and here and here and here and at this one it'll be a puddle down here and so now we can go back and see what happens. And you can see how quickly and really effectively you can animate. Of course, um, when you go back and you can see there are different projects we've created, you can use a background. I actually love this background. And one of our, um, one of our teachers created this one. And so I'd like to uh, show you this one. And this is, I love the crinkly paper. It gives it a little bit of a texture. And you can see that um, this was created in about uh, seven minutes or so. Very quick, uh, snappy kind of uh, an animation. And all the basics of animation are right here. The sequence, the, the idea that you need to tell some kind of a story, something has to happen or it gets really, really boring, but you get that notion of movement very, very quickly. And you can actually dictate how many frames per second, which allows you to really control the pace and how intricate you want it to be. But again, what I love is more than anything else for somebody like me who does not draw very consistently is the fact that every time I want to create a new frame, I see the old frame so I can just inch it a little bit. I can actually just draw over it and make sure that that happens. And as a result, you get this 
very quick um, option to create an animation. You can also export it as a movie and then uh, share it in other means or you can leave it inside the app. So this one was Flip a Clip. The other one that I love is Metascan. Metascan is magical. It is meant to be and there's a whole host of apps like that that are designed to capture 3D images. What I love about this is if you give it not just not enough information, just enough to create something, but not enough to create a full authentic picture, you're actually getting some magical, magical structure. So I'll show you how you do this. You start a new project and what it'll ask you to do is take a lot of photos of the object you're trying to, or the room you're trying to create 3D. So I'm using this cup and I just walk around and create um, lots of photos you have to create about 30 photos of the image of that uh, object or that area to have anything be able to render so you take lots of photos which is kind of, kind of fun on its own and you got to use different angles and obviously because it's on a table I'm not going to take photos from the bottom and that's fine but what you'll see is it'll also capture um, the room around it. So this is not just the object, everything is there. And now you can see all the images and I'm asking to process. Obviously you can get a full version that costs some uh, money, but I find this version actually the imperfection of the few, relatively few photos and the imperfection of uh, the not perfect processing creates really, really interesting images that then you can explore and decide how you want to do it. So this is going to take a while um, and we're just going to wait it out. Um, and you can close the screen and do something else while this is happening. It's processing. Uh, you can do this, by the way, with a phone. You can do this with your iPad. Uh, I'm using the iPad because it's easier to project and um, the images are a little bit clearer online at least, but a, a phone would work just as well. And so now we're uh, completely processed and that may take a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. And you can see this is a very large image and you already can see it captures, but it captures just what the camera saw and it's trying to conform it to a uh, reality. And you can see that you can rotate this and see part of the room I'm in, but really creating these funky structures. And then the focus on this cup is really fascinating uh, because the cup actually has, I don't know if you can see it, it has this handle, but because of the angles, that kind of merges into the cup and creates the structure that you can play around with. So the first thing that really I love about this is you just create this image that you can play with and really think about what angle do you want to choose, where is it meaningful, um, this top view uh, with that effect, that smudge effect is really fascinating to me with some fractals happening all around, some shapes. But the other thing you can do is you can actually enter, um, edit it a little bit and think about what the direction is. You can shrink the photo so it focuses on a specific area and it takes that extra stuff away. And eventually, again, you can share it. Even in the basic version, you can share a, a video that rotates around that image or you can share a, just a photo and um, you can scan it in different ways, you can send it. So even in the free version, you can create this kind of thing that uh, shows this uh, image and you can make sure that it's close enough and you can see that you're going around and you can change your background so you can play with it a little bit and you can see how that changes the effect almost immediately and uh, create a scene. And uh, one of the things that I usually do is slow it down considerably because you want to focus on the image. So this is Metascan. It's creating magical, magical uh, images. It creates a 3D kind of object or really captures 3D kind of object, but transforms it 
in ways that can be incredibly interesting and really make us think about how we perceive objects, but also how we can take physical objects and make them into something else. The last app I wanted to talk about is Creative Commons Express, and this is a way to uh, rearrange some of our visual materials and these are some that I created so uh, this is the collage which is my favorite thing uh, I have this cowboy thing going and so I have my own hat but I've, cre I've collected a couple of images started to arrange them um, and it's a really good way to take some things that you are thinking about or in the case of our journals you can take the written piece with a journal and then uh, overlay it with images and really create a thoughtful piece quickly. And let me just show you how to create a new one just so you can see what uh, it might look like. So you can bring into the project, you can go home and there are lots of ways to think about this. And I, again, I love the collages. So uh, you can do a collage that has a predetermined shape or you can use something that they have created. Let's start from scratch and create a layout. Let's say we love this, this specific layout and then you can bring to any of them any of your photos so you can bring in um, you can add a photo you go to your photo library or to your camera so you can capture anything uh, this is from our team, so I will use some of that. And this, we've added two. And now we can play with the actual dimensions, uh, directions, and really um, create a structure that eventually ends up being um, something like this. So this is one of them, and then we can bring another picture and you can see the process. Again, really, really is a, a Creative Commons Express allows you to create these really interesting collages that can start with children's or with students' images and the work they're doing, uh, take their journal entries, for example, and add and layer them and then mix them and make them into a digital product. So these are three really easy ways to create digital products, emerging media, starting with physical objects that our students are creating, whether it's their journals, it's visual creations, or even 3D creations.